We're excited today because overnight we had two blue spot ribbon tail stingray pups come out of mom. This species is beautiful and very uncommon. So it's really, really exciting for us to have the opportunity to raise two pups that were, that were born right here at Georgia Aquarium. Mom's doing great. She seems to be perfectly healthy after, after giving birth. So we're happy with what we see. The plan for the new pups is to move them from this lagoon to a holding habitat downstairs. So that will allow us to monitor their growth rate, how much diet they get every day, and to make sure that they don't have to compete with the other sharks and rays that are in this habitat right now. Got any eyes on them, Carolyn? Not yet. It's actually encouraging that Reggie's having a little trouble catching these little guys because they're quite energetic, very spunky, and that's exactly what we want to see out of a well-developed pup that was just born hours ago. There's one. Reggie, if you want to come out from under the bridge, there's one behind you. Just follow your line. I think he's got him. Excellent. Well done. So this will be our first opportunity to get a really good look. You see those blue polka dots. That's natural for this species. And here's the second pup. So far, they look spectacular. OK, I'm coming behind you. Because these guys are as energetic as they are, we'll have to do our best to, to go gently up this hill and not slosh too much, because they can launch themselves if we're not careful. All right. I think we're about ready to move them. Brilliant. This is their nursery so we can monitor them over the next few months to make sure that they're eating on time, making sure their growth rate is perfect. We're really, really excited about having these new members of the family. So we'll just be watching behavior and feeding drive, and those are gonna be the two most important benchmarks. Here at the Georgia Aquarium, we developed a new method in order to get blood from the whale sharks. This entails desensing them to our presence so that they trust us when we're up close and personal with them so that we can actually get blood. In the past, in order to get blood, it would probably require, you know, putting them under anesthesia or restraining them, and this is a lot less invasive. just went down, so they're gonna find you, Sean, and somebody will be bottle feeding him. Some shrimp and some krill to get into the back of the exhibit, and the other two divers will be working on collecting blood. We're looking into if there's inflammation that he has, if there's infection that he has. These animals, you know, they don't tell us what's wrong. They can't say, my tummy's upset or something like that. So there's not a lot of research done on sharks that say, yeah, this is specifically going on. But we want to know why. He's doing some tight circles. Leah's coming up. Sharks blood clots really quickly. So like we're not gonna be able to get what we need right now on this blood because I need it to not be clotted. So hopefully they get more. <laughs> That's what we're hoping right now. Let's see if this one isn't. Thank you. So this is good. The other was clotted, and this one is not. So we're really happy because we can run a complete blood cell count on this one. Kayla, nice job. You did awesome. See? 
No pressure whatsoever. You did awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. If we see inflammation in the blood, we can give him some steroids. If there's an infection, we could definitely give him some antibiotics or something to try to make him feel better. Right now, we're just hoping that there's no concern. You Yesterday was a really good start for this project. Our anxiety was a little bit elevated, and the belugas were sort of feeding off that a little bit. Today, we're hoping for things to be a little bit more normal and calm so that we're able to get really nice data points. Good to go. Yep. Make science happen. No pressure. <laughs> All right, you're good, Liz. All righty. For their first run with Maple yesterday, she was holding her breath a little bit more than we wanted to see, and she reacted to Katie standing up at one point. 3.30. So this time I'm communicating via text with Katie so we can eliminate any distractions. So she's asking how much longer that Jason thinks that we need to have her in there, so we're just communicating. I think another, another couple minutes. It feels a lot more still. She looks really still. She looks awesome. She looks beautiful. How do you feel about another, like, minute and a half or so? Breath. There's, there's a good chunk here that I think is going to work really well. 10. OK, you can end it. Nice, nice. job. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Maple. Oh, I know. Good girl, Maple. I see you. Nice. Cool. Maple did amazing. She did her full 10 minutes, set the bar high for the whole study. Groundbreaking whale right there. So that's pretty cool. Doing these kinds of resting measurements are the absolute hardest things for, for these animals. That said, you did amazing today. And so I think you just have set a terrific foundation. Yay. Yay. Nice awesome. job, guys. Yay. So I'm going to exhibit EL7, which is where our juvenile American alligators are housed. These juveniles got here about a month and a half ago, and I've been working with them on their training. We use them for outreach animals, and so we want them very comfortable around us. So the first thing I'll do is feed them, because that's what they want the most, so why make them wait? They will station on these platforms, and it helps ease the competitiveness in their eating. Each gator has their own specific platform that they're assigned. And actually, Cosmo's already stationing, which is really good. The most important thing that I like is a start a session cue, which I use this for. It's a device that makes an auditory sound. Once they hear this noise, they should know that food is coming. Hopefully, when the training is done, I should shake this, and they should each go to their specific stations. That's a long way coming. This is a slow process. All right, you guys ready for some training? I love that all of their heads turn towards me. Cosmo, being the good little gator that she is. Oh. No, no, no. So I need to have them singly on their platform before they receive a reinforcement. So Mojito is on the wrong platform. Daggery has gone to the wrong one. And Cosmo's on the right. Good Cosmo. Oh. Mojito. Oh. And that didn't work very well. They're all very eager to get food from everybody else's platform. Good Mojito. They don't care if my finger is food or not, so tongs help me keep that distance. Really, guys? Can you switch? Good, Dakri. I try to use their names a lot. They do really well with auditory cues. Good, Mimosa. I'm not going to call them until they're actually taking the food. Good, Mojito. To pair getting the food with their name. Good, Dakri. They're much more calm than when they first came here. Here we 
have all four. Good job, guys. And I am out of food, so that ends our training session for today. So these guys are pretty calm, and they're definitely ready to meet some kids. I'm like so excited. I've been looking forward to this since I've started working with these birds. It's been really cool to see them kind of go from that mid-winter plumage to the beautiful colors we have now. And now I get to see them in the next stage of their annual behavior. All right, guys. Oh, I see some interest. All right. What do you guys think? Is this exciting stuff? I believe we've just counted the alarm. <laughs> but see, it's innate for these guys to see that nesting material and immediately show interest in carrying it around. And there we go. Reef just went right into her burrow. And Clyde is a man on a mission. He is so ready to build that nest. And he'll probably start making his way on up to his penthouse up here uh, to his nesting box in a minute. There goes Bonnie, and he'll follow suit. Oh, it makes me so happy. All right, guys, good luck. Make some beautiful nests, OK? I am going to take that as OK. All right, Lindsay, what did you see? So uh, just after midnight, looks like Dew laid an egg. I'll get the egg out, we'll weigh it, that we give them some fish while we take the egg. Cool. Okay, Lindsay, I'll have you stay to the left. Okay. Y'all ready? We give a little bit of a knock, just not to scare them that we're coming in. Hello. Anybody home? Hello in there. Oh, hi. Oh, oh. I know Look we're here. You can. Oh, great job. There you go. Hi. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the egg. All right. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to cover the egg with my hand, so in case the parent doesn't really enjoy that part. The egg looks really great. I mean, it's solid. There's no cracks. I feel very good about the way it looks right now. 99.8 grams. That's wow. awesome. That's a good size egg. I'm going to go ahead and put it right underneath. We're coming back in. OK, I just usually, you know, I'll cover the egg to make sure Hi. that it's a nice, safe transition. So I'm going to let you go ahead and feed one. Yep, perfect. Oh, I'm going to go job. ahead in. Hi, friend. Here you go. Eggie's back. Eggie's back. This is so much more than I could have hoped for. Like, all of the different types of nesting materials that we selected are in there. It's like really overwhelming to finally see all of it come together. So it's, it's really cool. All right. You did great. We're proud of you. Good job. <laughs> Now we wait. It's kind of up to them. 